for the first year, we just had to like, we had to go hell for leather. I think me and Mark opened and closed the gym for a year straight. So we were there sort of 4.15 in the morning. We'd leave, last class was 6, uh, 6.30 at night. So we'd leave probably around, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Did that every single day. All of a sudden I had the opportunity that every single hour I was putting into it was was coming back to me. Yeah. Every member, um, every single per, you know, we knew everyone's, everyone's name that walked in. We knew everyone that was on a trial. We knew when it was the first time. We knew everyone's birthday. We knew, you know, what they had for dinner last night, mm. you know, why they hadn't shown up the day before. But it was just so rewarding because when it's for you, it's it's like ev literally every minute you're putting is for you, right? It was such an eye opener for me. It was just one of those like moments where everything just clicks and you go, yep, I get it now. This is what I, I need to be doing. No one's ever lucky. I, mean, I think the only lucky game in life is where you're born and then you make the rest. Stick around. It's going to be a good ride. How'd his off go? Is he coming back? Ease. Any sign? I don't know. Is Dan's com Dan coming back this week? Haven't heard. Yo! Oh, here he is. <laughs> here he is. What's this? <laughs> Mate, what's going on here? <laughs> Mate, didn't anyone tell you? Jeez. Didn't anyone tell you? Jeez, I missed one week because of surgery and you replaced me with whatever this is. Come on, lads. That was, Could've that's the better better. version, mate. Could have done better than that. He's <laughs> actually pretty, performed better than you did. Well, that's not hard though, let's be not. honest. <laughs> can you sit down? He's a good looking I can sit down. Yeah, so I'm in, I'm in loose shorts. Yep. So the surgery went well. Fill and dial sinus is what I had for the people out there. <laughs> if you think you've got a coxic problem, I've had it for seven years. Every ne for you know a couple of weeks now and then, you'd get a real sore pain. And you just sort of left it, and it'll come back and come and go. But then, like a little red lump appeared, and that's when I went to the doctors. He said, "Yeah, you got this um, filanol sinus, which is actually a ingrown hair." Yeah, right. And the only way to get it removed is surgically, which I was quite surprised. It's like yeah, it's like spaghetti. So they pretty much yeah. Oh. Well, no, they cut. Right. They, they cut around it. They take a big chunk out of your skin yeah. and it's an open wound. They can't close it up. So it's left open right now. Oh, so right now you've got- Two got, assholes. It's got a hit. <laughs> I've got two assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's looking after the dressing? The father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Not nice. So it was over this morning. Yeah, he came over. I didn't want to miss this one. I've got a, a, an old mate of mine, so I'm yeah. really looking forward to this story. An, an exciting, exciting one. A yeah. lot of value. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Yeah. Welcome back to Australia's number one podcast. We are the little fish and we speak to the big fish about town each and every week. We talk property, development, mindset, business, life, bringing you guys as much value as possible. Thanks for listening or viewing, however you're doing it. Like, share, subscribe. We really appreciate the interaction. Tell us how much you're enjoying it. Tell us what you're not enjoying even. I'm happy with that. Been a bit of feedback. There's a lot going on. Numbers it's are good. Cool. So, yeah, it's been yeah. awesome. Positivity has been amazing. It's been really awesome. Good. We've been super lucky, huh? Mm. No, it's not luck. There's no such <laughs> thing as luck. <laughs> it's only where you're born and <laughs> yeah. then something else happens and, Whoa, and straight into and that one. <laughs> the algorithm loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the trailer. You'll see what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's get into it, guys. This guest has been flexing his entrepreneurial muscles since he first became a personal trainer back in 2008. In the 12 years since then, he's hung up the resistance bands and he's made a name for himself in the world of marketing before getting into the world of fitness. He was a franchisee, the number one F45 franchisee on the planet for three years running, boys. Wow. On the planet? I, I was actually at that studio for so, a few years. Must have been a it great place been, to Must be. have been a while ago. I've been to it. It was, it was really good. <laughs> Fantastic. So a bit of perspective. In that time, there were circa 2,000 2, F45 studios on and the was, planet. And it was number one. For three years running. Ranked by what? Ranked by what? Glad you asked. Ranked by revenue, Benny. The oh, only, dollars. the only rank, oh, the yeah. only rank. <laughs> yeah. That's the real deal. No airy, fluffy, fluffy. Ranked by. Jeez. But it was so a two, really good studio too. It's not just like the, it is ranked on that, but we'll yeah. dive into why it was so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's yeah. We will. Right yeah. There's a fair bit there. Today, once selling out of his multiple F45 studios, he's transformed his marketing skills into a fully fledged business that combines his passion for building muscle and his knack for building brands. He knows a thing or two about keeping the rig in shape too, boys. Mm. Might be able to give us some tips, you know? <laughs> give it up for co-founder, CEO, world's fastest growing Pilates studio, Strong Pilates, Michael Ramsey. Yo, yeah. Ramsey. Ramsey. 
Benny, do you know what Pilates is? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, actually, no, 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 no joke. I, I, I looked it up earlier yeah. and I, I was left more confused. Oh, really? There was a guy, what was his name? Joseph Pilates. Yeah, Mr. Pilates. Yeah, so apart from that, because it really just said, spoke about him. So it was hard to- um. Thanks, Ramsey. Well, we've, Ramsey's got to, <laughs> we've, we've got the innovator yeah. in here today. So we'll find out. Thank you, guys. That was probably the best intro I've ever heard um, <laughs> in my life. So. Come on. Well, Thank Pete you. doesn't write them. Oh, no, no. So well, I wrote this one. I wrote this one because you nail it. Who writes them? Oh, I used to write them. Now we've, we've got a friend of a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Helping us because I, I stuffed up a few. <laughs> I think it's all in the delivery, Hollywood. It is. It oh. is. You delivered that well. <laughs> Thanks for uh, coming in, Ramsey. Pleasure, pleasure. And we'll Let's get to it. what Pilates is later, yeah? Like, because I'm definitely like, not even being funny. Like, my, when I think Pilates, I'm not thinking that you're building muscle and stuff. So it'd be interesting to find out well, that's, what it's all about. That's exactly right. That's what the great man's doing. Fastest growing in the world. That's correct. That's that, correct. That's a big, big one, that. Love it. Love it. Well, Ramsey, can we build a bit of context about Michael Ramsey, who he who he is, who he was, the things you were doing probably before the F forty five, before you got the before you got into that franchise? Yep. Um, you know, were you always entrepreneurial? Uh, you know, what were you where did your passions lie? Did you always know what you wanted to do? Where did uh where did it start? Sure. So yeah, I was always pretty entrepreneurial. Um, believe it or not, I actually wanted to be a professional piano player. Up until oh, that's at, great. About, Hello. about the age of 18, I, I kind of gave it up. So, you know, a lot of guys would, would play footy on the weekends. I had to give it up because I kept jarring fingers and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. So, um, yeah, I, I was going to be a piano player. And then um, the other thing I excelled at was sort of business management subjects, that sort of thing. So I got more into the marketing side of things. Um, but the first thing I, I got, I became a PT pretty early. Um, I ended up being a gym instructor while I was at high school. So... I had this sort of mad discount for protein and creatine and supplements. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would go into the store, buy the protein and the creatine, then I'd add sort of 20% margin and sell it to my high school. Oh, so you're flipping it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's a good sign. That's yeah, a good yeah. sign. And it's legal, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, at my school, most people were selling cig ciggies for a dollar. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Protein shakes. <laughs> so it's sort of like I was always like relatively entrepreneurial and then – um. I, I got a couple of jobs in marketing. Um, I worked in the boating industry, uh, worked in engineering. Um, the engineering job was actually family business. Mm. Um, you know, my dad being the guy he is, sort of wanted me to succeed and um, sort of gave me a, a little bit of opportunity there. But I mean, I was I was pretty lazy employee. Yeah. Um, I'd roll in at 10 a.m. every day and I just wasn't passionate um, about sort of the, the engineering industry. Um, so I went back, went back to uh, to uni, did a bachelor of marketing, uh, masters of commerce, and at the same time I was a PT. Yeah, right. So, Busy. Yeah, all through the, my PT was sort of my wage, um, and yeah, got to a point where um, I was actually working in nightclubs on the weekend um, with uh, with my business partner Mark Armstrong. Mm. Um, so Dan will know him pretty well, yeah, but yeah. yeah, he was actually my boss in the nightclubs. Um, and my role was to basically look after, you know, celebrities and 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 you know give them bottles of vodka and and sort of played a bit of a host role. Um, and he, um, Mark, actually approached me with this concept called F forty five randomly um, one day. Um, and yeah, that's that's sort of where it all, all, all came about. Um, wow! So, so you weren't searching for anything; you were just living, going about it, and someone sort of bought it. Brought it to you? Yeah, I, I would say I was I was pretty lost. Like I, I just really, I, I knew I, I was I was talented in what I was I was passionate about, sort of the marketing side of things and brand and those kind of areas. But I just hadn't found what it was. Um, and and when I finally found something that combined fitness, marketing, um, everything like that, it just sort of everything clicked. Um, so yeah, I reckon I was probably coasting after high school for probably a good you know eight years. Um, so it was really nice when it all came together yeah and then the hard work really started and that's when like the magic started to happen what a pivotal moment though when your boss comes to you with a with an idea and you probably never heard of f45 do you jump at that straight away ramsey or, or do you do you sit down do you want to see some figures like explain that to us yeah so at the time there was probably like four four or five studios open um, in, so in, Australia, in Australia or in the world? In Australia. Oh, oh, well, in the world. Oh, so it's, it's, it's started, oh, so early. It started in Australia. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, and what had happened was he, he'd seen it. He was looking at different businesses to get into different franchises. And he said, look, mate, you're a PT. You've got a marketing background. Why don't you try this with me? Hmm. Um, I was like, you know, fuck it. I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> um, so we jumped on a plane. We went to Bondi. Bondi was one of the first studios um, in the world. Um, I walked in and it was like it was like a nightclub, like it was like a party. Yeah, yeah. There was a DJ going. There was like a line out the door. Um, the whole room was packed, and it was a small, probably 150 square meter sort mm. of studio. So it's small. pretty tiny, but just everyone were like, was like sardines. You know, someone's doing burpees, someone's doing bloody shuttle sprints, <laughs> someone's pushing a sled. There's yeah. battle ropes, and there's this DJ, and it's just going nuts. And I was like what is this like this has to be the next progression in the fitness space mm -hmm. like it was just so cool um and you know having worked in the fitness space and 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 doing the you know the your 24 hour gym and and just you know cleaning up weights and and you've got you know les mills classes on and it's just it was the same thing i felt through my entire fitness career it was just it had been the same shit for so long and then when i saw f45 i was like this is it like this yeah. has to be it um and it was and it did too didn't it I, from my recollection back in that time it just went came out of nowhere and just went bang and it was like all the influences and celebrities and it was the hot place to be well this is before hence, Holly hence, hence hollywood was frequenting yeah. the spots yeah oh, we'll get there later on but this was before then i guess was yeah. it, it wasn't even big then when you went and first seen it in bondi well, well there are only three and you got to see it early and got to get in early but your business partner obviously identified you as someone he wanted to be in business with mm. and how did just before, to go back a step how, how did he hear about it how did he how did he come across f45 so early i think he was just researching franchises and it just popped up somewhere they must have been doing their marketing correctly and, and he must and have seen him. it somewhere yep. um and and he he was a um he'd been a pt before as well he loved the fitness space so um, yeah, kind of made sense. But yeah, so we ended up being our first one. We, we ended up getting six F45s in total. Hmm. Our first one was number 10 in the world. Yeah, so, right. And which yeah. one was that? Port, Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the beast. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was number 10. And that's the one Dan trained at. Um, but yeah, from there, we just sort of just kept going. So the one in Port Melbourne, you, you named it the beast. It yep. sounds like the beast, the research we've done. Talk to us about starting that and getting that off the ground we're like no one's heard, heard of it yeah what kind of, yeah, what kind of risk was involved like your number yeah. 10 it's early you've got to get this thing off the ground it doesn't it didn't sound like it had a ready-made brand ready to go no no it was um it was tough work and it, it was a massive risk you know um i hadn't i didn't have a lot of savings behind me um it was like to have even things like negotiating a lease and that and that kind of stuff is like quite daunting as a 26 year old, mm. um, it's it's pretty scary stuff. Um, but you know, we we managed to to get some cash together and and did it. Um, there was no brand equity in Melbourne at all, so mm. it was kind of considered a, a bit of a Sydney thing. So um, yeah, we had to really work work pretty hard. Ironically, my role at the nightclubs, I'd I'd had really good contacts with with you know people that that got good PR. So. I was able to uh, to swap a bowl of vodka for an Instagram post, <laughs> um, and then yeah, we just we just got him in, and and for the for the first year, we just had to like we had to go hell for leather. I think me and Mark opened and closed the gym for a year straight, so we were there sort of four fifteen in the morning. We'd leave last class was six uh, six thirty at night, so we'd leave probably around you know seven thirty eight o'clock. Did that every single day, um, including Saturdays, and it was just uh -huh. it was just like. But, it, you know, it was so rewarding because I'd been working for other people um, and I'd, I'd, I'd been sitting on a probably a, you know, 60K salary for for how long? And all of a sudden I had the opportunity that every single hour I was putting into it was was coming back to me. Yeah. Every member, um, every single person, you know, we knew everyone's, everyone's name that walked in. We knew everyone that was on a trial. We knew when it was the first time. We knew everyone's birthday. We knew, you know, what they had for dinner last night, mm -hmm. you know, why they hadn't shown up the day before. But it was just so rewarding because when it's for you, it's it's like ev literally every minute you're putting is for you, right? So, um, yeah, it was such a it was such an eye opener for me. It was just one of those like moments where everything just clicks and you go, "Yep, I get it now. 
this is what I, I need to be doing. And yeah. What about capital? Um, in the beginning, did you got you and uh, Armstrong? Did you guys have the capital, or did you, did you have to borrow? No, or? we had to borrow. Yeah, we had to and borrow. So we didn't. We didn't have the capital. That's um, a big. That's a huge step. Twenty six. Twenty six. Taking a yeah a lease and a, and a big yep. loan. Yeah, had a, had a little bit of help from family as well, which I was really lucky lucky to have. Um, and I know a lot of people don't don't have that. And it, it's really interesting because like now now that I've progressed to. To being a franchisor and i'm sure we're going to get into that there's certain um there's certain uh sort of points when we when we bring on franchisees where they they have to have some capital there you know they have to mm -hmm. have like a b c and d i think because we were so early with the f45 brand they were just like yeah cool boys just get involved yeah. like they, didn't, they didn't really do any background checks they were just like yeah, have a studio. Yep. So, so looking back, you're like, we don't, we don't want out, we don't want ourselves. You know, as 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 <laughs> franchisees, you yep. see that as potentially a little risk. So, yeah, but but what we actually did was we we negotiated because we had no money. We negotiated two free licenses. So, and to do that, we had to get some PR. So, we actually brought on Jimmy Bartell and Dyson Heppel, two AFL boys, yep. um, as partners. Mm. Um, and so we got Port Melbourne and South Yarra for free. Mm. Um, believe it or not, wow. and, and then we gave the boys percentages um, in the business, so we were able to counteract just, having yeah, no money. getting resourceful, right? Yeah. You just figure it out. There's always a way. That's awesome. That's a that was a mistake by the F45 team. <laughs> <laughs> Port Melbourne became the beast. And that was the most successful of three years in a row. Is that is that but Jimmy was in that one? Was Jimmy, he? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy was in that, and like him and Dyson had their their obligations. Like they'd have to post X amount of times on social media. You know, we had the boys on the footy show that would mention it a few times and yep. um, and then it organically kind of happened and, and more and more kind of footy boys came in and, and more and more kind of you know celebs and, and all that sort of thing um, and it's sort of an it's, it is a necessary evil in this circumstance like you've got a brand that hasn't kicked off in in mm. Victoria really at all we had to do it we had mm. to get everyone we knew with any sort of social presence to, to get around it. And why Jimmy? Why Jimmy and Dyson? Like, why, 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 yeah, why did you land there? We wanted um, someone who was an established AFL player who'd sort of won a, won a Brownlow or thereabouts, and we wanted someone who was sort of up and coming. So at that time, mm. you know, what's that, six, seven years ago, Dyson, Dyson was, was really there. up and coming. I don't think he was captain yet either. Mm. Um, and then Jimmy was that established kind of kind of dude yeah so you've got jimmy and you've got dyson running around spreading the news of port melbourne but ramsey for me when i rocked up it was more about what you guys have built in that first year and a half of the community of people that were going in there it was almost like um how do i describe it an institution where you had to go you want to be involved with everyone rocking up it was like a social event almost on a saturday morning when you went mm. there how did, did you is this what you want to grow or did it organically grow into that um, we were very particular to, to make sure that, you know, there was 10K at the end of the year for a big Christmas <laughs> piss up, um, you know, with like 1,200 members. And, um, mate, we, we, we wanted to build that culture and that community. community um, yeah. It did it did organically happen to some extent. And, you know, you got to – I'd probably have to thank a lot of the staff for that as well. Like we had amazing staff. We had amazing people. Um, and a lot of the community, like it ended up, it was it was really interesting. Like we started, you know, having the footballers and the media and, and that sort of thing. And what actually grew the business was actually the community. Um, mm. You know, your baristas, your hairdressers, your local business owners, your, all those people that were in the Port Melbourne community grew the Port Melbourne studio. So um, it kind of became that influencer space became secondary um and that's what's it's taught me a lot coming into my new business and, and new studios and things like that 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 is actually the primary thing that you need to focus on it's local area marketing it's it's, it's literally getting good people mm. in your studio yeah. um but yeah it was amazing we had we did classes of 72 people so we would have like six trainers on they'd all have their assigned roles and there's this like jungle of <laughs> heaving sweat <laughs> crap going yeah, on. Yeah. Um, but it was insane. It was so good. Um, but the community built, like, we, we used to always go out with groups of people on a Saturday night after training or even in the afternoon. That's what you sort of created. And I guess that's why everyone was so loyal. Yeah, exactly right. Like, everyone became friends and, um, and, and it was just – I think it was the way in which we delivered um, – I guess the way in which we let our staff, I guess, work across the, the whole studio. There wasn't any like 
pretentiousness or people were just as i said before everyone was just was just good humans and so people just become friends and yeah um that's that's a dream and, and that is the number one reason i think to a successful gym or successful say gym in the boutique space is community so it's always it's the number one question how do you do it how do you build how community? do you build community yeah um and the and the answer really is it, it's 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 just been a good good person like people yeah good, pe- so good, good people. stuff yeah, yeah. I, i'd always say you gave back to the members too by putting on dues throughout the year it wasn't just take 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 our money well they, well, they felt was, they felt valued you well, actually, the of it. well, they gave back to us. They yeah. put on events and free alcohol and things like that. And I think that, that shows a lot in itself. Yeah. And, and it was really cool. Like every time a member would have a charity alignment or something like that, if, if we had capacity, we would put on a, a fundraiser and, and whatever else. So that sort of stuff was really cool. Um, and that's just, that's the stuff that you enjoy with running a gym. It is, you know, it is a lot more. And I know it sounds cl- cliche, but you're doing a lot more than just just making money and, and having people sweat like you are building a community there's people that you know would have been pretty pretty scared to even rock up day one and, and at the end they're just they've got 20 new mates and and they're kicking goals and their life's better and they're feeling better and they're leaner and they're eating healthy and they're sleeping better and their mental health is better and like it's just it's a really rewarding industry to be involved in yeah um, get it. Get yeah it. yeah for sure so you've built the beast yep and now you got to six studios, so you started to grow and started to bring partners in in different different areas. Sort of tell us about how how do you go from all right, one's a success, and you bootstrapped it early on, yep. asked for favors, and now you've grown, and you know now you grew that to six until you sold. But talk about that. Talk about who you wanted to partner with, how you found the right people. Um, we end up actually we were we owned all six ourselves. Um, oh, so yeah, so yeah. we weren't, we weren't searching for partners. Um, we, as opposed to say having a good year and then you pull the money out of the business, we just kept reinvesting, 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 like next one, next one, next one, next one. Um, I can probably talk about this now, but we're actually, um, the one, uh, we had two in Darwin and, um, the founder of F45, Rob, we, we were on the piss one night in Melbourne and and we said to him, Hey mate, what, what do you think is the best? the best territory that's left. And he said, by far Darwin. So I did a bit of research on Darwin. And Darwin, you, there was a parameter of like 10 kilometers where you've got say 120,000 people there. Whereas you see now with F45s, there's pretty much one on every corner. So yeah. you probably have a, a, a pool of say 20,000 people, but up north there was an extra 100,000. And so we said to Rob, why don't we all just go in this together? So we end up going in with the founder of the brand. <laughs> um, Candy. And so there, there's concessions there. Like he, he looked after <laughs> he looked after us a little bit. Um, and so he was a co-owner of, of, of our Darwin studio. So he, he was probably one partner that we brought on. Um, yeah, it sounds like a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he's still a good mate and a mentor now. Um, he, he sort of got out, um, I, I guess, in the last sort of year and a half. Did he, oh, so he's out of F45 completely. Yeah, is Mark, because Mark Wahlberg, is he he's part of it? I know, I think the Staffords. Yeah, yeah. So Stafford's are, fr- are franchise owners. Um, Mark Wahlberg's actually got a big piece of the pie. So, um, yep. and then they, when they listed on the stock exchange, I think Mark Wahlberg maybe had like seven percent from memory, and 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 he got a nice big payout, and then probably sold some shares. And <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's really interesting how it goes, and it's 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 commendable like you need to you know even though when they listed on the stock exchange i had nothing to do with the brand mm. i'm still like look at it i'm like yeah like well you know well done yeah. boys um <laughs> but like to to get someone like a Wahlberg um to get to even tackle the states is bloody scary like mm. it's a massive place you don't understand like california's got more people than australia you know yeah to even to even try and just one that. yeah to take on one yeah. state it's just California insane. seems like the perfect state though for mm. for an F forty five gym like it's like made for it with that influencer Hollywood sort of feel is that mm. the one I think that's the one the Staffords have got maybe yeah. in, in Hollywood yeah there? I think they're in West Hollywood they're yeah. one but I mean it, in in the same breath yes the demographics fantastic as high socioeconomic community um, but there's so much competition like oh, okay. you've got 10 times the amount of competition than you would in australia so you know i i, f- I f- find australia to i wouldn't say it's easy but you can build a brand here mm. um and australians really get behind australian brands as well you know there's a big reason starbucks never worked in mm. australia we love our local our local coffee shops our baristas 
and and Starbucks coffee shit as well. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's yeah, a yeah. great point. Yeah, yeah. There's a big case study on it um, about why you know some American products, American brands, particularly even in the fitness space, they've come into Australia and within a year have gone back out because we we just don't embrace a lot of American culture. Well, mm-hmm. masters, um, masters in our industry didn't didn't last. That's American. Yep. In the construction world, they tried, didn't really work. So, that's another example, I guess. Yep. But, Ramsey, I want to ask so, you've gone from two studios, you had South uh, South Yarra, yep. South Yarra Port Melbourne, then you went to the six. How do you deal with staff then? Because your staff's just gone from X amount to bang. I've got staff interstate and here and there. And, and up how, and down. Up and down. How do, you, <laughs> how do you sort of control that? Yeah. Um, you need good managers, you need people you trust. Um, and so we probably had like, there was, there would be one to two managers at each studio, let's say, so 12 managers total, um, and then another five trainers per studio. So we're looking at, you know, close to what's that? Uh, 42. Yeah. Something that close to 50 staff. Yeah. Close to, <laughs> yeah. Call, call it close to, you know, 40, 50 staff. Um, but yeah, it's it, that's when I, we, myself and Mark had to learn a lot of management skills and, yeah. and management structures, and even giving like our, our one of our top performers, um, Portia, she's actually still working with us today. But we gave a percentage share in one of the businesses, and and that just gave her, you know, a little bit of reward for an ownership, reward, yeah, an ownership, yeah. So that yeah, it's definitely difficult, and and definitely Darwin, you know, that I I think that was one of the first ones we sold um, because it was hard to. Hard, hard to do it. Yeah, hard to manage, but that was still great. Like great a long community. distance relationship. <laughs> I'd, I'd fly up for the parties. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's not you, it's me. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> but that's a good point, I think, like offering an employee a, a percentage of a, you know, either the profit or the business. Well, we hear that Because they're going yeah. to put more in for you then at the end of the day. Yeah, they have an invested interest, right? Yeah. The reason to, to go the extra mile. Exactly, exactly right. And, um, you know, she, we, we ended up selling, we, we gave her a percentage, uh, Porsche, we gave her a percentage in, in the Geelong studio, we sold it. She ended up um, taking the money. So it was, it was pretty decent sale and, and she went and traveled for a year and like she came back completely different person. Um, mm. And she, I think she really needed it. Mm, um, cool. But it was like, that that was really cool to see. Like I wasn't like, oh no, you've gone away and you've travelled and whatever. Like <laughs> it was awesome. Like she's like, yeah, cool. I'm out of here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, enjoy. Like, um, but yeah, and you gave her that opportunity to do that. Yeah, at the end exactly. of the day, exactly. Sounds exactly. like she she probably earned it though. Would yeah. that be fair to say? Like, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Made herself invaluable and. Yep. Yep. And now I've reemployed, done a full circle. Now reemployed. Now she's yeah she's working for uh, for strong Pilates, but um hey. yeah there you go. Awesome. So let's let's go. All right. Let's get to strong Pilates. So you. Oh, what just for that? Can we ask why why we sold? I'm still. Yeah, that's we'll put something the, put I want to know. Yeah, put the sale together for us. We've got six. We've got six why. big studios hum, humming along. And how'd you humming along? And you won three in a row over the world's best <laughs> studio. So I'm, and, and revenue was the key factor. So you're earning good coin. And you've jumped into bed with the with the chief the up in up in Darwin, and then you've gone. You know what, man? We're, we're out. We're out, dude. Yeah, we have we've actually got a better idea. What's going on there? <laughs> it was it's it did send some shockwaves like cuz we were so into that there is a community of franchisees you can imagine and and, yeah. and I've still got really good friends that own studios there and it did send some uh some shockwaves um when you saw when you used to saw when we sold yeah. yeah but it was like I, I don't know like personally I'd always wanted a little bit more um I would give feedback to F45 around how I feel the workout should be structured. I even um, consulted in a marketing sense and I would pitch to, um, for certain ideas that would bring in, um, you know, a different consumer and they just probably weren't being heard. Um, And so it it was a natural progression for me to go, all right, I think it's time that I I start looking at doing my own concept that I can control. And, um, And my business partner, Mark, was really like, he, he really backed me up. He's like, nah, mate, you, you know, you got oh, this, you got this. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that's, he's been unbelievable through his whole process. Um, so then, yeah, we started looking for, um, for buyers pretty early on. Um, Before you had the concept of strong. Yeah. So it took, it took probably a year and a half to sell six studios. Um, mm. And luckily we got it all, we got them all sold before COVID. Um, and then in that last year, we were working on the new concept and then we had a, 12 month non-compete as well so we couldn't open I think we opened with like three months to go with that but (laughs) no one picked up on it (laughs) no no one's watching man (laughs) Um, but um yeah look it's 
yeah, it, it's just it's just one of those things. But I'm so happy that I did it. It's yeah. insane. Most people, I would argue, would when they they land on a good thing, six studios, print and money, great community, the rock stars of the fitness, you know, fitness world in arguably the the most livable city on the planet. And most people would probably rest there and go, you know, we're doing all right and we've made it. Just enjoy the life. Early swims in the beach and stuff, but it sounded like yeah, that, that's crazy that you've gone and risked it all and gone. This is good, but I can do better. Yeah, it's wild. And, and it has been a risk. Like we've put most of the money we made from those sales back into Strong, uh, the growth of Strong. So it is like it is a massive risk. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 highly rewarding. Like it's yeah, it's been amazing. unbelievable. Yeah, that's amazing. So mm. so the idea around Strong. Do you want to? tell us about how you come up with that and also what it is but it sounds like you found a, found a little hole in the market and something you could really really attack so you did your research you did your due diligence and now you're going 100 miles an hour at it yeah it was um i never thought i'd be in the pilates space but um i actually broke my ankle um i was doing an adidas commercial and i was running and the brief was like jump over shopping trolleys and do all this stuff on the street and i twisted my ankle and um, broke it and then I couldn't do any more impact work at all so I couldn't do jumping I couldn't do burpees I couldn't do anything like that so I started going to my mate's house in Paran and 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 jumped on a reformer just to start strengthening my ankle up mm. and and he took me through like a few flows and then I got better at it and it really helped my rehab and I realized wow there's, there's something to this Pilates mm. stuff but I always found myself getting a little bit bored and, and feeling like I had to have a workout after my reformer workout um and then um my housemate at the time sent me this link to an instagram post in the us and it was this machine called a row former and it's a, a rower attached to a reformer um so this big big four meter machine and 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 people would go from the rower to the reformer to the rower to the reformer and it looked really high intensity and tough and um so i jumped on a plane i went straight to the us um found when I met the founder of, of, of this sort of concept and the machine and um, did a workout and it was probably one of the hardest workouts I'd ever done in my entire life and it was considered mm -hmm. Pilates. Um, and I walked out of there and I was like, I need to bring this to Australia. Yeah. Um, the thing about the US studio was um, there was only sort of 10, 10 beds in there so you could only cater for 10 people um, there wasn't a lot in terms of you know music and lighting and, and, and atmosphere feel. Um, it sort of lacked a few things that I felt would, would be required to be a success in the fitness space um, so we sort of negotiated the, the rights for this machine for Australia, New Zealand, Canada and Asia um, and then came back to Australia and started building a brand and building a concept and, and building out more so the customer experience. So, um, you know, now every strong studio, there's phone chargers in, in lockers. So people leave their phones in their lockers and on their phones during a class, mm. taking photos of themselves. <laughs> um, every After every workout, there's a towel that's been soaked in eucalyptus oil that's in the fridge that they get straight afterwards. Nice. We've created our own scent. So every studio smells the same. We play a lot of Jay-Z, so there's cognac in the scent. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Smaller no, details. No, yeah, we call them the one percenters, but we've looked at- 100%, man. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Um, so we've sort of built this brand strong around this machine. Um, and that was sort of, you know, almost sort of three years ago now that we started that. Um, but now we're developing the machine. So we brought in a bike version, um, which we're going to roll out to the network. And um, we've built our own tech around everything. So the instructor uses a clicker. It's not, nothing's on a timer like, like the likes of an mm -hmm. F45. The instructor controls the workouts with, with sort of like a clicker um, and takes the clients through. So there's a visual guide. Um, yeah, so we've, we've kind of built this own, our own sort of concept around this machine. Um, but it's, it's crazy. Like, it, we're trying to be the heroes of low impact. That's our that's our mm -hmm. whole thing. We want people to sweat. We want people to burn calories. We want them to get re results, but we don't want them to get injured. Mm -hmm. Do you so, build muscle? Can you build muscle doing it? Absolutely. Have a look at him. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, more importantly, can Benny build muscle doing it? <laughs> 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 Rome wasn't he's built. Not <laughs> he's, going, he's not answering. He's going back to the high school days when he was selling right. the, the protein. I've got a question, like, for me, like, because I'm, like, I get well, the Pilates thing, right? Like I don't genuinely don't completely understand what Pilates is. And I imagine I'm not the only person, but my initial thought when I think Pilates is 
spandex and girls stretching and uh, stuff. So, so how how do you bridge that gap to appeal to someone say like Hollywood? Yeah, I mean that's that's what it originally was. It was you mm. know the lengthening of the muscles and the and yeah. and you know the it was it has been very female focused mm. to date. And so if you ever walk into a strong studio, you'll see we're completely gender neutral. <laughs> We're, our, our branding is like black and white with a splash of light blue. Our branding's very strong, like it is. It's strong, and and um, and now we're getting like we've got at the moment we've got Brendan Favola in there that we're working on doing big a fev, the big fev, fev, right on the on the yeah, right. So it's very easy for us to get women in. F females are early adopters. Um, they try things before men do, and it's it's crazy. We can have a studio that's ninety percent females, um, but to get the guys in, you need to get guys like. Fev and um, Travis Boak is one of our main ambassadors now as well, and 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 just getting um, good male influencers just to come in and, and show that you know Pilates is for everyone. But yeah, Fev's been a really cool case study because he's he's pretty broken after footy. Um, you know, he's he he's taken a little bit of time to to gain that sort of base fitness level, but now he's he's smashing it. He's lost probably close to 10 kilos, I reckon. Oh, wow, there you go. Um, Fev can do it. So you, you'll see him. I think we've got a PR thing tomorrow. I saw him on the him. billboard the other day and thought he looking looked a little bit puffy. So that's, oh, yeah. that's <laughs> awesome. That must have been... You, you can no, see all, him from, his, yeah, you from could. his face now. He's sort of like... And I think he's genuinely a little bit happier now. Like he's, yeah. he's yeah. training more. He's watching what he's eating. Um, so these they sort of like just, just ex-athletes, blokes in general, like just to get them in that haven't trained for a while or haven't trained before. It's just, it, it's so good. So that was a conscious concern when you were over in the States or when you were initializing and figuring it out, going, all right, Pilates, Pilates, Pilates. This, you know, in practice, it's good, but in theory, we've got to figure out how we can we can present it in a way to get the people in. Does that make sense? Yeah, it was definitely a concern. And, and that's why, I mean, brand is, is one aspect to being able to get some of that male audience, but another one is also the programming. So we do like, We've got dumbbells that go up to 15 kilos, which is like criminal in the Pilates world. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. we, we lift heavy weights. We do. We focus on progressive overload, so people will do the same exercise the following week and lift heavier. And we want mm. them growing muscle and all those things that guys actually like and that are fantastic for women as well. We're doing that in our programming. So the concept itself is tailored for guys and girls, and the brand itself is tailored so for guys yeah. and girls. And yeah, whoever. That's, that's, yeah. So Ramsey, before you went to the US, like you've yep. made a truckload of money from the F forty five studios. What makes you risk it all on the Pilates thing? Like what was did you do any kind of research back here in Australia to say this is gonna be the next thing? Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of data around um that it's interesting they classify the big market research firms classify Pilates and yoga as one. And there's a lot of data to say that the Pilates and, and yoga industry is has got a graph, a massive growth trajection. Mm. Um so, you know, we looked at that and we said, Yeah, we're in the right space. And and what we've seen so far is correct, like bar the pandemic. Um you know, what we've seen is correct. Pilates is going nuts. Mm. Um, so there was a lot of research. Um, so you didn't just wing it. You, you actually <clears throat> dived into the numbers and- Yep, yep. Um, and, and interestingly, like I think, so the global fitness industry in 2019 was worth 96 billion. Um, the following year was came down to 54 billion because of the pandemic. Mm. And now this year is predicted to top over a hundred billion. So, so right now the, the fitness space is a, is a massive growth space. The gym space is a massive growth space. Um, and, and the likes of like your, your fitness apps and your, your Pelotons and those kind of things are actually on a massive decline. So you want to, we, as an entrepreneur or as someone who, you know, wants to own gyms or sell gyms, this is like a beautiful time right now. Um, so yeah, it's so great. Can I, can I just clarify or try and understand? So when you were, when you sold, you yep. sold without the idea of Strong's. You hadn't been to America. You hadn't even thought of Pilates. You just sold thinking, I'm going to come up with a concept. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to figure that out after I sell. Yeah. Is that exactly? That's it's awesome. Yeah. That is, yeah, yeah that's yeah. You knew, crazy to back yourself in. You to, knew there yeah. was something else. And then- You knew there was going to be something better. Well, the universe looked after him because then your mate sent you Mark. the Instagram post. Yep. That 
that catapulted or was the catalyst to it all, which, you know, obviously you didn't know that was coming. What were you going to do? Like if that post didn't come, like where were you? Were you? Did you have any ideas at all where you were going to- Travel in Bahamas on his yacht, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> the sales. Maybe for two years yeah. and then I would have gone and lived with mum, I reckon. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, it's- I don't know. I always knew it was going to be the uh, the fitness space, and um, you look at competitors like your body fits and your fit stops, and your, um there's quite a lot of them coming into this sort of F45 space. Yep. Um, I probably, if I hadn't have found the row former, um, I probably would have been another one of them, mm. um, which is a highly competitive space and probably one that. I wouldn't want to be in now, to be honest. Um, so I'm really happy that that I did find it. Um, yeah. Well, you just got to. That's the message, awesome. isn't it? You just got to back yourself and yep. have a go, and you don't need to know how you're going to get there. You just need to know you're going. Exactly that- right. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like you did the research as well. You did the work. Exactly. To figure out what was going to be right. Like for anyone out there, the lesson is it's crazy, if you want to do diligence. it, you've got an idea it can happen, but mm. do the due diligence, do the work. Yeah. And it's been a, it's been probably a, you know, now a seven or eight year process. Um, but having gone, having sort of been that franchisee at the start, working the, the 15 hour days and, and eating shit for a year, um, it's been such a great rewarding process to go all right now i know what that's yeah. like now i can now i can go to franchisor because I, I've, I've i know what it's like to be a franchisee with no money i know what it's like to be a franchisee with with money and with a successful studio and now i have a full picture of and when they're not listening so yep. we're, we're on f45 it's falling on deaf ears so when your franchisees yep. are talking it's crazy yeah mm. so like our our onboarding process is massive like we we give so much education to our our franchisees we're going to take them all to bali this year at the end of the year on a retreat Shit. and educate them more and we'll have you know guest speakers and all this sort of stuff is so important and this is the stuff I'm getting really passionate about, but that's because I've come from that, that being that franchisee, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think there is a bit of a lesson in that. It's like, you know, you, you have to start somewhere and sometimes you're not always going to be here. Sometimes you need to start here and it's always a, a, a bit of a progress. Um, yeah, but it's, I, I guess eight years is relatively quick in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, very quick. Maybe. <laughs> very yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty so, quick. So when you're choosing franchise ease, is that right? Yep. Is, so you said there was an onboarding process. Can you explain a little bit of that? Because I guess for people out there in our industry, it could be the same as taking on an apprentice or someone or or even, I guess, even subcontracts franchises anything, anything a little bit. Anything you're yeah, partnering with someone, aren't you? Yeah, it's important. Yeah. High stakes. Is that like what sort of onboarding tips do you have? Yeah, it's um there is a there is an, a bit of an interview process. Like there's basic um there's basic criteria that they need to meet. Um, whether that's having access to capital to be able to open a studio. Yeah. Um and then and then we it is very much like a marriage. Like when you when you've got a franchisee, you're actually in business with them. Like mm. we take ten percent of their revenue. So we are we are we are ten percent business partner with them. Um so yeah, it, it is about screening them, um, talking to them, finding out what makes them tick, what, how much they're willing to put into this. Like wh- when we started F45s, that they would sell it as, hey, you can have this studio and you can go surfing in, in you know, during the day and, <laughs> and live this life. Whereas we sell it as, like, get ready for some of the hardest years of your, your life, but some of the most rewarding. Um, yeah. So there's, we've already, like, there's been people we've dropped from the network already because mm. we felt they're not a good cultural fit for us and and there's people that have we've brought on and they've they've really we've been not sure about they've really surprised us and and just gone hell hell for leather and just yeah, yeah so there is a process yeah. it's, a, it's about the right people i think our friend scott didier he said the same with his business about finding those key rock star people who are gonna that they have those three or four different attributes that everyone else has and, and it's a bit trust your gut wasn't it yeah we, and i guess that's your screening make sure you trust your gut yeah yeah i mean you can try and you can try and make this really analytical or try and have like this pathway of, of that they have to do but at the end of the day like your gut is is gut, what's gut. right yeah yeah so how, how did you um prove the concept you've come up with strong pilates um you've launched it obviously through you a probably, pandemic well yeah through a well, pre-pandemic i'd imagine or, or whatever but when how did you sort of bridge the gap of oh, what am i trying to say so 
Hey. <laughs> we've lost, we've lost him. You threw me out. Ramsey, sorry, mate. This happens. Benny, Benny gets lost. Who loses that? That's a blank. Who loses that? Right, so, you, so, you, so you were telling us earlier you've got, you're eyeing off 75 sites. Yep. So... <laughs> So you've oh, got so you've got seventy five sites. I was going to say, how do you prove the concept? Sorry, PK. How no, you're you, right. You take it. Yeah, yeah. So you launched you, you launched it, and that's you know that's that's hard to launch a business for anyone, but to launch a business with a mindset of it's going to be a franchise business. That's you know you're taking on the world. Then, so how did you like launch it and then prove? Well, was it difficult to prove the concept? How much? How how much did you have to prove it to to get the first franchisees to put their hand in their pocket and to back you? Yeah, it was. Sorry, boys, for the. No, you got there. <laughs> no, you got there. <laughs> um, it, w- it was extremely, like, probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life is prove a concept that has got no, like, absolutely no yeah. reputation, no nothing. Um, good question, Ben. It was a good question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. you got there, it was good. <laughs> so, so, for context, we, we've got 12 studios open. We'll have 20 by about July, and we've sold about 75. So, are these 12 yours only? So no, no, they're all franchise. So, franchise so you've got only. 75 in the pipeline? In the pipeline. Wow, is this? Yeah. So, you've sold 75 franchises already? Yep. I'd, I'd say the concept has been proven. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But, but how did you prove That's like that's, yeah, yeah, question. Yeah. How yeah. did you and prove I, it? And I know number 76. <laughs> I've got number 76 over here. You're pointing to me. <laughs> Someone's already got the area. So I asked the question earlier. <laughs> but yeah, how, how, did you, how did you prove the concept and more importantly, so quickly, right? Because yeah. you said it before, eight years is a relatively short amount of time to achieve what you've achieved. And we've been in business a long time. You as well, Dan, like you feel like you're moving quickly, but things in, uh, invariably take time, right? Like how the hell have you mm. launched a whole new concept, bought a whole new machine over, launched it, generated enough numbers and figures and proof to then go and you sell know, eighty of them? To go and sell eighty of them? Yeah, yeah. It was in a pandemic. We're, we're, we're really lucky. We had the F forty five reputation that we'd achieved okay. that. Um, so um, we had people who kind of followed us from from day one of that journey, um, and that became I, I wouldn't say easier, but it, it did it did give us some sort of credibility from day one. Um, and then it was honestly, it was just so much about brand. Um, and I didn't realize how important um, sort of brand was. Mm. Um, but just building something that was unique and cool and that made sense, like that hit a gap in the industry where people who do know a bit about the industry were like, hang on a second, he's doing low impact reformer with a cardio component and people can actually burn calories and get results doing Pilates. That is so unique um mm-hmm. so we had to market the concept itself correctly um so yeah i guess those two things and yeah but but the reputation stuff really really helped the fact that we've done it before and um and we've been pretty you know we, we've probably had opportunities to burn people in the past in this in this space and we've been really good blokes i would like to think the whole way through so you know there's no sort of there's no bad blood with anyone there's no bad bad sort of stuff there so i think that really helps as well just just kind of being a good bloke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trustworthy. <laughs> Trustworthy, <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah. it, it, it yeah. does. It does matter. Yeah. I actually thought you had one your own. I thought you and Mark must have owned one of the gyms or one of the strong Pilates and then that's when it branched out. Yeah, we did. We, we opened our first one. Um, Alstonwick. Alstonwick, yeah. um, which, which we've actually just sold um, to, to one of the members just because it's getting a little bit too much to operate a head office and a studio. Yeah. Um, so we put our focus into that. But yeah, we did We did start the first one ourselves. Um, we had a franchisee buy-in within like two months. Um, they knew it was good. Yeah. That in two months of our operating, they yep. knew it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was that was the guy down down your your way actually. He's got me area, the one I want to yeah. buy. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll sort him out. So <laughs> where, where, did you, where, where did you get the... Uh, the 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 cl- the clients from right so you start with nothing yep. one of the things that you know I've done a bunch of businesses over the years tried and failed tried and failed and all those kind of things and the number one thing I've always found the biggest issue is people think I will build it and they will come right it's n- it's never the case You're, building it is only one part of it how did you get people in the doors initially to start you know to to, to get the to get it all ticking over yeah it, it was it's a bit of a hype sell like you need to really really hype it up um and to be honest those first few months like the class we were just testing the concept the classes were pretty dead um and we had to we had to just just work and grind and um you know there's your digital marketing you're trying it again 
replicate what we did at F45 by getting influencers in and getting PR around it. Um, and it's just, a, it is a crazy grind. And the, the thing is people bring people. So mm. if you, let, let's say in the boutique space, 300 members is generally what you cap out at in a, at a studio. If you've got a studio of 150 members and everyone brings one friend, you're full, right? It gets, it actually gets easier as you mm. continue yep. through your, your life cycle. With with no one, it's so hard. So it's just it's just a grind. There's there's so yeah. Many that's what I was gonna say because yeah. I'm, I'm like thinking like yeah because it's the same in pretty much every business, right? Or, or in a lot of businesses. So you've got like you said those initial ones, the concepts there, the brands there, the new system or machines there, and then you've got six or eight people in the class and you do all this you know marketing, all this crazy marketing, and you get another four in, but the four get there and there's only six in the class. Yep. That's the that's the grey area. So how how did you combat that so that when those four came, they were like, okay, there's only six here. But you know, when you were saying the classes weren't full at the start, how did you get them to stay? Because most people, you know, they follow they like follow the leader, right? So yeah. they go, oh, well, there's only six. That was good, but and they drop off and sort of going around in circles. You've, you got to um, in the, in that circumstance, we had to really rely on friends and family and, and yep. call in favors from everyone to come in and. and so you and did just, do the, yeah, awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Oh, everyone and and it's interesting some people come out of the woodwork that you never expected would come and support you and others that you thought would sometimes don't and that's okay but like would you ask for support would you? all the time yeah literally okay. reaching out to people hey can you come and fill this class yeah hey can we're trialing this new concept please come in um yeah so you, you do have to give away freebies you have to get it going um but eventually um you know when you start to build that momentum and what we actually found was all the um all the pilates instructors from the surrounding studios uh, came in and they were our first members so we call them the early adopters so they're the ones taking to, and they they could train for free at their studios but they were paying to come and train wow. with us and that's that's when we were like yeah, we, we got it. something good here. Like, um, yeah, so it's, I don't know, it's a combination of absolutely everything. Yep. Um, marketing, getting friends in, being like, like it's just- it's so doing, doing whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Making yeah. yourself. Doing whatever it takes. Was there ever a moment where you thought, fuck, we've just spent all our money- <laughs> Strong parties. Is this a yeah. thing or not? You know, <laughs> is this a thing? Was there ever one of them moments? <laughs> Heaps. Heaps. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's half the fun as well, isn't it, right? You got to take the risk. Oh yeah, the and downs make the highs even higher. Imagine, imagine investing like everything you've got, <laughs> and then three months, in three months later, a pandemic hits. Like yeah. uh, that was that was one of the hardest things. But how, how did um, you get through? How did that? How did all that go down? Um, sat on the couch drinking red wine <laughs> for three months, <laughs> and then uh, sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. And then booked a flight to Darwin, quarantined at Howard Springs, yeah. um, got through flew to Queensland, launched a studio on the Gold Coast because Queensland was still operating. Still down, yeah. From that that studio built up so much interest that we probably sold another 10, all all like up north where, you know, because Vic was in lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's how we managed to get through as a franchise was, was just getting the hell out of Victoria. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and what we find is every time we launch a studio in one location, um, the surrounding the surround, suburbs, yeah. everyone goes, hang on, I want one here. And mm, then, yep. so it's sort of, that's your best marketing for, for franchising is just opening a studio in that area. Um, but yeah, I did the whole, yeah, did the whole quarantine so, thing at Howard Springs and yeah, yeah, it paid off. So you did what you had to do to make it work at the end of the day. Sounds like just, after, after seeing the, the bottom of a couple of reds on the couch, you, you know what? I'm going to roll the sleeves up here and go. There was a lot, a lot of Tassie Pinos. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you have a, did you have that moment where you thought for when you first heard about the pandemic and that early stages when no one really knew what was going on, you know, did you have that moment and you genuinely thought, oh fuck, oh, I'm in trouble here. Yeah. I, and that was, I was I've, 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 I've always been like quite optimistic through the whole thing, but then like when we realized, oh, hang on, we're not getting out of this. Yeah, it was it was pretty tough. Um, yep. But again, like having having Mark, my business partner, being so positive and, and, and just, just backing me in and um, he's just got a little one now. So he, he, he couldn't come to, to Darwin and, and, and quarantine, but he backed me, he backed our decision-making and it actually gave us a lot of time to work on the business model as well. Like primarily like you don't have that much time in a day 
because you're doing A, B, C, mm. D, E, you know. Um, and just to sit there and reflect and, and work on it was was pretty good. But yeah, there are, there are a few rough moments there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I want to ask a bit about Mark uh, and your business partner and yourself. How does that dynamic work? Because you two are very different people, but you are also really close mates. So how does that all kind of work? Yeah, it's Mark's very much the back of house operations. Um, he is quite client facing. He's a very trustworthy guy. He's great to deal when he deals with the franchisees and stuff. Um, I more so do the marketing. I'll put myself out there. I come on podcasts. <laughs> um, <laughs> the front man. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's we don't we don't often ever have arguments. Really, like we we both don't really. Money's not our primary objective. So, and I've had other business partners in the past with other other businesses where we've fallen fallen out, and that's always been over money. Um, whereas myself and Mark, we just we we know what we're trying to build, and and you know if 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 there needs to be extra money allocated here or there, or um, it it just works. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. It's a hard partnership to explain um, because we are chalk and cheese, but um, it, it really works well. Yeah. I think when it works, it works. I look at the, these two boys, you know, Benny and Pete. You got you got your chalk and cheese, but you've got two <laughs> guys works. that want to get to the same place. Yeah, yeah, it's always resonating deep. It's probably the deep. I think the core to it is best we, all, we all want to get to the same place and best outcome. We butt heads a bit, but then you go, well, we, you know, deep down, you want to get to the same place. And, and you're spot on about the money as well, though, right? Because we're I, I, I'm, we're the same. Like it's not it's not necessarily it's bigger than money for us, you know. We we we've got a dream and a passion to do what we do. So yeah, as long as we're both best outcome, that then we can get to the best solution, whatever that might be, sort of thing. You don't we don't ha I don't have to be right and he doesn't have to be right. So when so when the people out there are trying to find a partner, if you you both or or multiple have have the same goals and you you know, deep down you know where you're headed, it's a you know, it's a bloody good sort of mix. Yeah, definitely. Same and same morals, same, you know, everything like that. Yeah. Right. Um it's it's actually pretty handy having completely different skill sets as well. It's nice. We complement each other nicely. But you know, the arguments do happen sometimes, but the I reckon they're really healthy because we find a middle ground and yeah. um yeah, but it's never anything it's never anything bad. Or that, personal, or personal right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're the yeah. same. We get we don't get I wouldn't say we get heated, but we feel the cheeks going red and stuff and you're disagreeing. <laughs> but again, it always comes back because we both want the same thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, you know, we can swallow our pride and go, yeah, maybe you're right. Yep. yep. Can I can I ask a, a one more or well, whatever? There might be a few more. No, but. no, we're, we're getting there. You <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, you go. Yeah. What's what's the goal for strong? I want to know because it seems like you've you've hit mm. it running, mate. You've got eighty stores opening up or eighty franchises opening up. What's the goal? What's where's on the it, vision board? Where's it going? Yeah, is it? It's obviously inter, international already. I guess it's going to be. Yeah, we're we're launching Auckland um, next month. We've got a site in Singapore. Um, we've got a site in Vancouver. Oh, hey. um, and then we've got one coming in London as as well soon. So it's. Did you get the rights for that machine over in Europe? Just just negotiated. I, I was going to say because right. you, you didn't mention that. Yeah. At the start. Yeah. Yeah. Hot off the press. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Europe um, as well. But Jeez. I, to be honest, like it, people talk about, oh, you need a five year plan and you need to do this and that. I honestly don't have one. Yeah. Um, it's it's just we, we're trying. We don't want to cannibalize um, each other by having too many too many studios next to each other. We're trying to spread it out. We're just trying to get strong everywhere. And and to be honest, that's it at the moment. Um, there's no there's no massive sellout plan. There's no massive like we're just just having a crack. It's just um, you and your business partner. There's no other. That's right. Yeah. We've got we've got investors sort of knocking on the door. Um, uh, there's one over there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a capital raise? <laughs> 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 But um, yeah, there's there's no honestly there's no real plan, and we're we're bringing in people into the business that are helping structure things a little bit more, and and they're the ones they're the professionals saying, all right, guys, if you want to get to this number of studios, here are the resources resources that you need, and um, but at the moment, I'm seriously just enjoying the ride, and they're big they're big bloody days at the moment, but um, still getting the training in. Yeah, still get yeah, still get the training in. Um, probably not as much as I used to, um, but yeah. Is it daunting, mate? Is it like I'd I'd dream to be able to grow a business that big, but is it is there some part that's daunting? Yeah, what what what's it called? Imposter syndrome. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it, sometimes it, it really is, and sometimes I'm like, geez, I, I wish I just had a normal job because. <laughs> You do, you do, you do have those days, like, and they're they're more often than not. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it's so it's so cool. Like, I, 
I, sometimes I forget how 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 cool this actually how is. Lucky you are, yeah, how lucky you are, how awesome it is, yeah. Um, I mean, you're taking on the world, yeah. So you're not just, yeah, it's, it's in wild. the in the industry that where your passion lies. And one, by of, the sound of, and it. one of the mm. biggest booming industries on the planet. So, yeah, yeah. Tick 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 tick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sounds like, yeah, killing it. That's killing why it. The Hollywood wants in. Hollywood <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> wants to get in early. You see, someone <laughs> can't even buy well, one down right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. Um, Ramsey, mate, really appreciate you having on. We've got one more for our audience. You know, if you were going to give any advice out there to the people that are maybe looking to take that step, buy that franchise, um, start that business, take that job, what advice would you give? Would you give them? Um, I, I would say if it's if it's opening a business or something along those lines, um, do your research, work out, like really do your research, mm. get a business model that works. And then once you find out that it works and it has to work financially, um, then go hell for leather. So do your research, get the plan together, make sure that it works and then just go like crazy. Um, because honestly, that first like year or two or three is just... Like you have to, you've kind of, you kind of got one opportunity to, to really get it right. So, um, yeah, just go hard. I love it. That's love perfect. It. Hard yeah. work, man. That's perfect. Yeah, that perfect. those first three years, whew, perfect. they're tough, aren't they? <laughs> 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 what was it? It was hard for me. <laughs> they're hard. No, that's awesome. Ramsey, really appreciate it, buddy. Legend, yeah, mate. Man. Legend, Legend, mate. Appreciate you. your time. Good man. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me in. That's it, guys. Thanks again, Ramsey. Anyone that you think is going to get value out of that, please share to them. There was plenty in that. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for viewing. Like, share, subscribe. Get the algorithm pumping. See you at the top. Are we going to get Benny into a strong? <laughs> <laughs> the machine's probably not fucking long enough. <laughs> <laughs>